Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Recently on the channel, I started a five-part Space Crusade campaign called Renegade, in which a team of ultramarine terminators are hunting down a scientist who has very foolishly infected himself with some gene stealer plasm. Not recommended. I've played through the first mission, and if you haven't seen it yet, I will avoid too many spoilers here, and I'll link to the mission in the video description below. But I will say that the Terminators have ended up in the position where on their next mission they can take a Terminator Librarian with them. Now I have Terminator Librarian miniatures, but nothing period accurate, and because I love to use period accurate miniatures whenever possible, I bellowed my war cry, to eBay, to see what I could turn up. Originally, I was looking for one of the plastic Terminator Librarians that turned up in the Gene Stealer expansion for Space Hulk, as they would be most in keeping with the design of the first and second edition Space Hulk Terminators I am using for my playthrough. However, those aren't cheap, and I also have to keep in mind that any Rogue Trader era stuff I buy should also be able to do double duty in my games of Advanced Space Crusade. And in Advanced Space Crusade, there is no Terminator Librarian with a Force Axe. Instead, there is a Librarian in regular power armour with a Force Sword. So I looked around for something that fitted the bill, and I found this gorgeous chunk of metal, which I have hit with a coat of Ultramarine Blue Primer from Army Painter, just so he fits in with the rest of the gang. This is a Librarian with Double-Handed Force Sword from the 0145 Space Marines range from 1989. Technically, for Advanced Space Crusade, the Librarian should have a bolter too, but this chap does have a holstered bolt pistol, so that's close enough for me. He was too damn cool to pass up. So this Librarian is going to be joining the Terminators on their next mission, taking the place of one of the regulars with a Storm Bolter and Power Fist. So I thought I would take a moment to go through the special rules for using a Terminator Librarian in Space Crusade. First of all, the stats, and bear in mind this guy is technically supposed to be in Terminator armour with a Storm Bolter and Force Axe. He has a movement of 4, armour class 3, and 1 life point the same as any other regular Terminator. Librarians attack at range with 1 red dice and 1 white dice, and they attack in melee with 2 red dice and 2 white dice, making them the punchiest units in the team. Best of all, they get 4 psychic abilities. The rules for this campaign included psychic ability cards you could print out. Here are mine. I printed them on the thickest card I had, which I then glued to a second piece of card, and then I coated them front and back with two coats of Mod Podge, first going left to right, then going up and down. This gives the cards a sort of linen finish texture, which is quite nice. There is a chance the Mod Podge coating may crack, because these cards have flex in them, so I am waiting to see before I print out the other card sets and do them this way. If the coating does crack, I will just laminate the cards instead. Anyway, the rules. There are four sets of psychic cards with three cards in each set. The yellow cards are psionic, the red cards are power, the green cards are kinesis, and the blue cards are temporal. At the start of the game you are allowed to select four cards, much like selecting equipment for your marines, but you can only take one card of each colour. To use a psychic power, at the beginning of the turn the Space Marine player has to announce they are using a power and they discard the relevant card. During that turn, the Librarian is unable to do anything else unless the rules of the power state otherwise. And that's it. Very simple, very clean rules. Now let's get to the fun bit. Let's see what these powers can do, starting with the psionic cards. Control targets one model within six squares and line of sight. The Librarian takes control of the target for the remainder of the Space Marine's turn, and can move and attack with it. Taking control of the Dreadnought for one turn could be a lot of fun. Next is Scan, which lets the Librarian select any two rooms on the whole board. All the blips in those two rooms are revealed and converted into models. I actually think this power is pretty useless. You really want to use this power when you first enter a board section and new blips are placed. But of course, you have to select the psychic power at the start of your turn, probably before you have had a chance to explore a new board section. This gives the alien player a chance to react to your plans when choosing and placing their blips. Then there is Smite. This strikes all aliens in the eight adjacent spaces to the Librarian. Dreadnoughts lose one life point, anything else is instantly destroyed. Very powerful, but relies on you being surrounded at the point you play the card, because of course when using a psychic ability, the Librarian isn't allowed to move. Next are the power cards. Hellfire is ridiculously good. It's like a souped up missile launcher with limited range. You can target any square in line of sight within 8 spaces. Aliens in that square and the 8 adjacent squares are hit. 
Gretchen and Orcs die instantly. For any other aliens, you roll two heavy weapons dice against their armor class as normal. Lightning Arc is also really good. You throw it at any model in line of sight, attacking the target with two red dice. If the target dies, the lightning will leap to a new target and you repeat the process. This continues until the lightning fails to kill something or has traveled 10 spaces. This is one of those abilities that could fizzle out hopelessly at the first dice roll, but if you get a string of good rolls, it could really do serious damage. Finally, there is Vortex. This is something you use when things look grim. The librarian destroys himself and is replaced with a Vortex token. The token moves randomly at the beginning of each subsequent alien and space marine turn. You roll a d6 to see which direction it moves in, but on a 5 or 6 it fizzles out. Anything touched by the Vortex is instantly destroyed. This seems a bit too risky to me. Losing the Librarian and then potentially having the Vortex immediately fizzle out, or worse, head in the wrong direction and eat your own Terminators, doesn't seem like something I would often want to try. Next up are the Kinesis cards. Blast is interesting. You can target one door or object token, and blast it five spaces in a straight line. Any alien model in the path of the object is destroyed, except the Dreadnought who loses one life point. The fun thing is, if you use this on a door, then the path of destruction is two spaces wide to match the width of the door itself, so you could crunch a lot of aliens. The problem is being in the right position to use the power at the beginning of your turn. There are only so many doors and objects in the game, and I feel it would be difficult to make the most of this ability's destructive potential. Jinx is quite situational. It only has a range of five squares and requires line of sight. You can select the Dreadnought or up to three androids. The models are unable to move or shoot for one turn, giving your Terminators plenty of time to make a tactical retreat or lay down as much firepower as possible. Then there is Teleport, which feels like the most useful option. At the beginning of the turn, the Librarian can move to any space within the board quadrant he's in. Afterwards, he is still allowed to take a normal turn, moving and shooting or entering into melee combat, which is an exception to the general rules for using psychic powers. Teleporting doesn't seem too exciting, but when you are only lumbering around 4 spaces per turn, a quick redeployment can be a massive help. Finally, we have the Temporal cards. Burst of Speed is played out of sequence. Instead of at the beginning of the Space Marine turn, you play it after the Librarian has completed his actions. He is immediately allowed to take another turn, but cannot use a second Psychic ability. Warp Time affects the board quadrant the Librarian is in. All of the Space Marines except the Librarian are allowed to take two turns. The Librarian isn't allowed to do anything else at all, as he is concentrating too hard on warping time. The very last ability is Aura. This affects the Librarian only, and increases his armor class to 4, making him virtually indestructible against ranged attacks. Basically, anything that rolls two white dice has no hope of hurting him, an android rolling three white dice has a less than 2% chance of success, while anything rolling two red dice has just an 8% chance. In other words, nobody is going to bother shooting at the Librarian in that turn. To add insult to injury, he is still allowed to move and shoot as normal. The downside to this ability is he can only use it on himself, and also, armor class is completely irrelevant in hand-to-hand -hand combat. If an opponent gets lucky with their melee attack, he could still die. Although, as he rolls two red and two white dice in melee himself, there won't be too many aliens brave enough to take up the challenge. And there we have it, a very quick rundown of the rules for librarians in Space Crusade. I hope you found it interesting. If you liked the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really liked the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.